Welcome to part 3 out of 5 short tutorial videos on how to get started with Persette Labs. From the previous parts, you learned how to install and set up Persette Labs, and got a good idea of the UI. I also quickly showed how to get a model from the data wizard. But now, it's time to build a model from scratch. We'll be building a classification model which uses transfer learning. And hopefully, by using Persette Labs, we'll see just how easy that is. Okay, let's begin! For this new model, we're going to use a new dataset. It's still a public dataset, but this time we'll be using the one called Brain Tumors. It's a dataset from Kaggle, which has different images of MRI scans of brains, showing which brains have brain tumors and which ones don't, so we can perform image classification on them. As soon as you download a dataset, it gets downloaded to your Percept Labs default datasets folder. In here, we can open it to take a look at what it looks like. For this dataset, besides the CSV file, we have two folders. One called No, which contains all the images without brain tumors. And one called Yes, which is the ones with brain tumors. The CSV file we're going to see as soon as we enter the data wizard, so we look at that there. Going back to the tool, we can now press the Create button to create a new model. We already went through the data wizard last time, so here I'm just going to set that the images goes as input, the labels becomes our targets. I'll rename it to Brain Tumor Model. and then press the Create button. As we can see, the model got recommended just like before, so we have a nice baseline model to use. But this time, we're going to delete all of that and build a model from scratch instead. The model we'll be building is a transfer learning model, which uses a VGG16 component. We can find that component in here, if we press it, hold the shift button and click down, we'll place it while also automatically connecting it to the previous component. Over to the right, we can see the settings of it. For this one, we're not going to change any settings. What they mean is include top means that we're not going to include the last three layers of the pre-trained model. We're not going to use pooling. It's not going to be trainable, meaning that the component itself or the model itself won't be updated while we train. But we're just going to use it to extract features from the original images. And finally, we'll be using weights based on ImageNet. To complete this model, we're going to need two more components, which are two dense components. I'll set the neurons on the first one to 128. And I'll make sure to change the activation function to realo instead of sigmoid. You can play around with different activation functions, but realo is a pretty good bet for dense function, for dense components. In the second dense component, we want to make sure that the output is the same as the number in the targets. In this case, we have two different targets, no and yes, so we want our output to reflect that. To do that, we set it to two neurons. We also change the activation function to softmax, which is a function that makes sure that all of these values add up to one. It's a great activation function to use if you're doing categorical classification. Then we just connect everything up and we're ready to go. 
After pressing the run button, I'll set the epochs to just 5. We'll have a batch size of 4. The loss function we can change to cross entropy, as that is the best one for classification problems. And then we'll just press run. But that will leave for the next part of this tutorial series. Hey, I hope you had fun creating your very first model in Percepti Labs. Now it's time to train and evaluate that model. Watch part 4 to learn how to do that easily in Percepti Labs. And as usual, if you run into any issues or have any questions, please visit our forum at forum.perceptilabs.com or reach out to me directly at our Slack channel, link down below.